Finally, I get a winter solstice where the sun is out at midday and I get to do my marks to show exactly where the sun is on a passive solar house, as well as many other things to do. So let me show you, take advantage of this uh, beautiful day and for future planning and for reference in the future. So last uh, time it was the winter solstice, it wasn't sunny and I only was able to mark it on December 18th on my house. Uh, but today it's the winter solstice and the sun is out, yay. So I get to pop up here, a shadow of the Christmas lights. And that is the winter solstice. Okay, so again, if you're not familiar, look at the shadow. Uh, so that's a four foot eave. And the sun is at such an incredibly low angle uh, on the winter solstice. It's 14 degrees above elevation. So this is zero degrees, 14 degrees above elevation at midday. And this is how I designed my house. So I get full uh, passive solar at the winter solstice in my glazing. So I have a dimension off of the shading of the eaves trough add to there to get my exact angle just to prove to my concept so if you haven't seen my house on passive solar house building basics winter solstice so this is the coldest shortest day of the year from here the sun's going to get higher in the sky it's going to creep its way up here as time goes on so as the sun gets higher in the sky, the days get longer and it does get warmer outside. So that sun is going to go down here slowly. So February 1st is I'm getting full glazing still. It's very cold outside. February 22nd, uh, you know, getting most of the sun in. And April, like getting half glazing on the windows. And it's getting nice outside. Right? And by May 15th, when it's like summertime and hot outside, I'm not getting any heat from the sun because the eaves trough completely blocks all of the hot summer sun. So you only want the sun to come in in the wintertime. And that's the solstice up there, the winter solstice. The summer solstice is literally on the deck over here. It's at a 60 degree angle. So it comes in at a very sharp angle and my house is completely protected and it stays nice and cool. So you can observe the inside of your buildings. So you want dark thermal mass, that sun in the winter time, especially the winter solstice to come driving in on dark colored thermal mass. You can just simply observe, take measurements, put marks on the walls or whatever you want to do to see exactly where that sun is going to reach throughout the day on the winter solstice. It's extremely cold today and the sun dogs are just beautiful on each side of the sun. So another thing is to check the shading on the north side of your house and uh, this is a simple way to do it and I just everybody has a phone so take a video reference is the simplest way to do it but the house shades a certain part of the yard and you can see on the winter solstice uh, my greenhouse back there is completely hit by the sun with no shading whatsoever. Seemingly small things like a five foot fence that's like 20 feet away from the greenhouse you even have to be careful with where I live and that little shack over there is almost going to touch the glazing so you have to be very careful where you structure these things. It is such a steep angle on the winter, winter solstice, but even steeper at sunrise, sunset. So you don't want any obstacles to the east or the west of the south side of the structure as well for shading. So for my, my next build project is a barn and or uh, solar panel system. So my shop is quite high and the building's going behind the shop. So I have to be careful that I'm not going to shade any area of where solar panels are and this includes at sunrise and sunset when the uh, sun is even lower than midday on the winter solstice. Use my sophisticated measuring foot and uh, make a mark and take the measuring device through the snow and measure exactly where 
that dimension is. So if you have a greenhouse or all of your other buildings that have south facing windows, you do everything on the interior and take note and put marks of where that sun is coming in at. It's a little bit hard to see because the polycarbonate on the greenhouse diffuses light to get an exact uh, place where the winter solstice sun is hitting. But I would say the sun is like barely touching those water tanks up on the pallet racking. Perfect for algae growth. I still got to cover them up because of just the ambient uh, light, but no direct light really hitting my water tank storage. Boom. The black fish tank is getting direct sunlight. Obviously, it has been for a while now. Uh, this is the tilapia tank. They're in there. Don't even need any uh, of my LED lights on because in the winter time, back here in the deep part of the greenhouse, uh, because it's getting full-blown sunlight right on them. Another important design factor that I considered was the raised beds and the front windows. That sun is at a, such a steep angle at 14 degrees that all of these plants in the raised bed still get direct sunlight even on the winter solstice. It's so damn cold out, my phone literally just died. So we'll cut that close, but today's the winter solstice. Get your measuring tape out, think about future plans, make some mar marks, and uh, don't let it go to waste, or else you gotta wait till next year. Okay, thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.